big welcome back to Everett Community College as the men's Sweet 16 continues with this matchup between the South Puget Sound Clippers and the Yakima Valley Yaks. Hello everybody, I'm Wes Tucker. I'll be keeping you company throughout this great matchup we're about to see here between the East number four seed and the West number one. We'll have plenty of action for you. Two 20 minute halves. Two teams enter, one leaves. But before we send you away, we'd like to remind you today's game brought to you by the NWAC. Fans, check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. Also, visit NWACsports.org for the most recent updates on schedules, scores, stats, and more. As certified jumpers, divers, and survival experts, Special forces are dropped behind enemy lines to train foreign fighters, carry out covert missions, or prevent future conflicts. These soldiers live for the challenge. Highly trained and highly intelligent. Special forces soldiers are the best of the best. First day of school is kind of scary. You don't know your teachers yet or who your friends will be. But school is really important. It's how you learn things and grow. Okay, I'm ready. You're going to do great, Mommy. For you. For them. Clark College. Get started today at Clark.edu. a number more than living paycheck to paycheck you're a multitasking life engineer full of experience that's why you belong here where you'll find more one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty with programs that can lead to in-demand jobs and the support you need to get where you want to go all at an affordable price get started now Edmonds Community College edcc.edu and we are back at Everett Community College. Again, the men's Sweet 16 continues here on the NWAC Sports Network and STSPN. So we'll go ahead and take you through the starters, beginning with the Clippers. Demonte Malloy, Hunter Sipe, A.J. Hodges, John Moore, and Wes Reynolds. And for the Yaks, Quentin Rayner, Jermon Boykin, David Lindgren, Modesta Britton, and Trey Delk. For those who missed the first broadcast today, it was a good matchup between the Peninsula Pirates and the Clackamas Cougars. The Pirates came out victorious by a final score of 87 to 74. And the scoring was led for the Cougars, a great 24-point performance by Nigel Parr. 
who hit four three-point attempts out of 16. Had a very good game himself. However, a more even spread when it came to points for the Pirates. 16 was the lead, and that was Marky Adams, followed closely by Colby Jackson at 15. Next one after that was seven. So it was a very well-played game earlier. So we look forward to another great matchup here as the Yaks take on the Clippers. And winner of this game will face the Pirates in tomorrow's Elite Eight matchup. And we'll look forward to having you on board for that one. Again, the Sweet 16 today for the men. The Elite Eight tomorrow. There will be no more women's games played this weekend as the final four is all set for the women's bracket. And it looks a little something like this. Umpqua will face Bellevue. And Big Ben will face Walla Walla. And be sure to stick around for more NWAC basketball after the conclusion of this game as the Edmonds Tritons will take on the Lynn Benton Roadrunners. That one's going to be sure a lot of fun. Hope to have you on board for that one. Yours truly on the call. And introductions are just about out of the way here. But what we can expect here is going to be a great game. The West, normally a powerhouse when it comes to NWAC basketball. But they'll be taking on a very tough Yakima team who comes out of the East with the four seed. South Puget Sound, of course, coming out with the number one seed in the West. And we have NWAC basketball for you all day. The final game tonight is at 10 p.m. for the start. So, if you choose to spend your weekend with the NWAC, welcome aboard. And we're about ready to get things rolling here. Tip off just around the corner as Wes Reynolds squares up with Modesta Britton. Everything is set, and away we go. Immediately won by the Clippers. With it now is John Moore. Moore dumps it up front to Hodges. Hodges will give up to his teammate Malloy. And here goes Hodges again outside. Contested three, no good that time from Hunter Sipe. So now the first opportunity for the Yaks as Rayner will dump it off there to his teammate Lindgren. And Trey Delt back over to Boykin. Boykin will give it right back to Rayner. Rayner again right back to Boykin. And now here's a long three from Rayner. It's rated three from Quentin Rayner. Three to nothing, Yakima Valley with the lead and pushing up now and drawing the foul is John Moore. That foul is going to be on Modesta Britton, his first personal, the team's first as well, as we're just about finished with the first minute of play here in the first half. Again, I'll reiterate, the winner of this game will play tomorrow against the Peninsula Pirates. And pushing up now, Wes Reynolds. It's not finished off. Delp comes away with it. Dumps it up on the outside to Boykin. Boykin over to Rayner. Rayner right back across to Lindgren. Puts it up, but not good enough. Rebound by Wes Reynolds. And here comes Sype. Sype dumps it off to Hodges. Hodges pushes up for two and one. And that foul is going to be on Trey Delp, his first personal, second team foul. And that's going to send Hodges to the line. Hodges, a 72% free throw shooter. Will square up for his first shot. And it's good. So one for one from the line today is Hodges. One for one overall is the Clippers. As we're now tied at three. Rayner with the ball. 
Dumps it off to his teammate Lindgren, pushing up, no good. Rebound, Reynolds. And away goes Hodges. Hodges passes backwards. Reynolds, and Hodges feigns three, pushing up from the corner. Outside, gives it off to Malloy, and can't finish it off. Ball comes back into Boykin. Boykin to Delp. Delp. Finds Davis and Delp with the two point shot, no good. Hodges. Gives off to Moore. And Reynolds can't hold on to it. So tied at three. With 17.47 remaining in the first half, Delp brings it into Boykin. And Boykin crosses half court. Hands off to Rayner, contested three, no good. Rebound that time, but collected by Sight. Sight wasting no time on the outside. They give off to Moore. Moore right back to Malloy. Malloy shoots the three, but it's no good. Reynolds can't get the rebound. It's going to end up in the hands of Davis. Delp for three. No good, just steal. And Sipe cannot collect the ball before it goes out of bounds. So it's going to be the Yaks ball from near the corner. Delp will do the honors. He'll throw it into Boykin. Delp observing the situation, finds Davis. Davis gives it right back. Davis pushing up, goes for two, right hook in there. And wasting no time, here comes Hodges for two, you bet. So Boykin now observing the situation, two right up front for the Clippers. Rayner. Outside to Delps, Delps over to Boykin. Boykin trying to push up for two, and the rebound got by himself. And this time the ball finds its way into the net. So Hodges. Squaring up, and great screen that time from Reynolds. And here comes Malloy. And they're gonna call traveling on Malloy, so a turnover. Delp will bring it in from their own baseline. 15-59 remaining in the contest. Gives it off to Boykin. Boykin taking his sweet time getting across the line. Finds an open teammate in Rayner. Rayner goes right back outwards, and a three from Rayner, no good. Rebound, Davis. And they'll go outside, Lindgren will dump it right back off to Boykin. Lindgren feigns three. And there's a foul on Hodgins. So it's going to be a throw in. Boykin doing the honors from the Clippers baseline. The Yaks currently lead seven to five. Delp away with the ball. Rebound one. In the end, however, by Nolan Black. Reynolds pushing the paint and a right hook not enough to finish it. And the ball still loose and recovered by the Clippers. They give off to Moore. Moore to Reynolds. Reynolds right back to Moore. Moore pushing up. Driving outside. Reynolds wide open three. And splash down from downtown. Eight to seven. Puget Sound with the lead. Rayner finds Lindgren. Lindgren over to Davis. Davis over to Delp. And Delp now under the basket. They go to Lindgren for three. Splash down. Lindgren. 
So Hodges with the ball as the clock ticks down to 14-30. Black over to Reynolds. Reynolds with the right hook, no good, and recovered by Boykin. Boykin pushing up and will draw the foul. And a timeout will be called. So away we will step, but a good one so far. Nine to eight, Yakima Valley with the early advantage. Today's contest brought to you by STCU. A financial cooperative founded by teachers, STCU is happy to support the students of the Community Colleges of Washington. You can join our not-for-profit credit union if you live, work, attend school, or worship anywhere in Washington. So, quick back and forth to open up Yakima Valley with a one-point advantage with 14-17 remaining in the first half. As the Yaks make their way on, again the Yaks, number four seed out of the East, taking on the number one seed out of the West. We got a chance to talk at halftime of the Peninsula game with Wes Reynolds about how difficult this Yakima Valley team is going to be. He said, don't let the number four in front of them fool you. They're gonna be an insanely tough competitor and they've proven to be so, so far. They lead by one point as Boykin has the ball on the outside. They'll give off to Lindgren and will hand it right back. Lindgren puts it in. Davis for two. And that one will go out of bounds. Off the hand of Boykin playing some very aggressive defense here out of the timeout. 13.59 remaining. And 11 to eight lead after the bucket made by Davis. And now the officials making his way over to the table. And will walk his way right back. So the ball given off to Moore. Moore looking for an open teammate, finds Wes Reynolds. And Hodges pushing up. That one off the hand, ends up in the hand of Lindgren. Black running him down. Ball goes up and off the hand, and Raider with an opportunity for three, but Moore able to come down with the rebound. Moore makes his way across half court, full head of steam. Up he goes, and not enough to finish it off. Oh, and what a collision on the court between Hodges and Reynolds, my goodness. It looked like Reynolds caught the better part of the bony part of the knee of the sternum. And Hodges grasping that right leg as if something hyperextended. A truly scary collision. We've seen a couple of them. Reynolds able to get up right now. Hodges still down on the court. So we'll give him some space here. We'll step away, but don't go anywhere. So we take another quick look actually before we go, a slow-mo. Here's the contact right there. And yeah, it looks like the knee of Hodges was hyperextended while the wind was knocked out of Wes Reynolds. Boy, that is truly scary. We had a collision yesterday in the women's elite eight that actually uh, sidelined an official. So while he's tended to, We'll give him a little bit of space and step away, but we have more NWAC basketball after this.
WCC is affordable. Find your way. Attend part-time. Direct transfer. Join the fun at WWCC. So we get another look here, just a high collision, and yeah, look at that, the knee bends backwards, and he lands awkwardly on it, was Hodges. And oh boy, truly a scary collision down there. Reynolds up and fine over in the team huddle over there. Hodges still down on the court, being tended to by the training staff. His coach out there beside him as well now. Coach Aaron Landon. And we'll take this time to remind you, today's game is brought to you by Pierce College. Celebrating 50 years of possibilities realized, Pierce College is here to guide you to student success. With more than 60 programs of study at Pierce College, is a fit for you, your life, and your schedule. Including short-term certificate programs, transfer degrees, and even baccalaureate degrees. Pierce provides flexible degree options to help you on your path. And that pathway is clear at Pierce College. So they're going to help Hodges up. Down in a sitting position now as you get another look at that. Just a awkward landing to go with the fact that it made hard contact with his teammate there. And he's able to move on his own power. He's got a rather hefty limp in that left leg. So he's going to meander his way over to the training table. Just hope he's all right. We'll have updates for you as they become available. So 13-29 remaining in the first half. As the teams make their way back onto the court, an 11-8 lead for Yakima Valley. Moving the ball right now is Caleb Paquette. We'll give it off to Black. Black back to Paquette. Paquette on the outside now, dumps it off to Reitman. With the ball now is Malloy. Malloy pushing outside, and here's a shot at the shot clock's buzzer. No good from Sipe. The Clippers come away with the rebound, however. Reitman trying to work his way around Lindgren. And here comes Black. Black on the outside. They go out to Reitman once more. Long three. No good. Rebound by Boykin. Davis with an easy layup for two. Paquette with the ball now, finds Malloy. Malloy enters and leaves. Sipe has it batted out of bounds by Davis. So the Clippers maintain possession, 15 seconds on the shot clock and a 13 to eight lead for the Yaks. Black trying to make his way around Davis. Paquette, long contested three, not even close. But they're gonna call a shot clock violation before the shot got off anyway. And a timeout taken, so away we step once more. We'll have more men's basketball, Sweet 16, after this. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? 
or am I cheating myself? What you say, Quaid? This game brought to you by the Jet City Roller Girls. Jet City Roller Derby brings the sport of roller derby to Sonomish County. Tickets for Jet City's 11th season are now available with doubleheader bounce at Edmonds Community College. Featuring a family-friendly environment and a beer garden, Minus Skeeter handing out flyers to receive a discount off entry to the next bout. So a rather loud way to open things up after the timeout. And now the Clippers, an opportunity to respond. Malloy pushing up outside, shot from Reitman is gonna hit the steal. And that foul is gonna be on Nolan Black. That is Black's first personal foul, the team's third. And Boykin will move the ball across half court. Blodgett, with the ball they give to Davis. Davis back out to Boykin. Boykin finds Blodgett again. Fames three, moves up. They give Davis, and Davis puts it away for two. A nine point lead for the Yaks. Malloy, up and can't finish it off. Rebound one by Sipe, but the Yaks come away with it. Blodgett making his way up. We'll backtrack a bit, wait for some teammates. Boykin with the ball, Thanes to the right, holds on to it. Shot clock at 17 seconds. Boykin goes outside to Lindgren. And Blodgett from downtown, splash down. Beautiful three. And here goes Moore outside. Here comes Sipe trying to get one of his own, but no. Blodgett comes back with it. Racing up, they give it to Davis. Davis over the back. And Davis is gonna collect a foul. And so we will step away again on another timeout. It's a 20 to 8 lead. The Yaks are widening the margin. Red Lion Hotels Corporation is built to thrive. With innovative programming and in the know staff, our hotel brands offer guests great stays and a chance to immerse in local culture. Red Lion Hotels and Red Lion Inn and Suites are better than ever. For travelers who want to get lost and discover adventure, we open the door to the best local experiences. We have reinvented the loyalty program. Introducing Hello Rewards, the first recognition-based loyalty program that encourages members to go further, fly higher, travel better, with tailor-made rewards. And we're not stopping yet. Presenting Hotel RL, our newest hotel brand. Inspired by the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest, an uplifting, relaxed atmosphere, a staff that loves what they do. For adventurers at heart, Hotel RL will inspire an amazing journey. Our future has never been brighter. Three strong brands, an expanding portfolio, industry leading innovation. So back to the action, we get a 12 point lead for the Yakima Valley Yaks. The number four seed out of the east taking on the number one seed out of the west, the SPS Clippers. And with the ball now is Paquette. Paquette dumps it off on the outside to Adrian Dick. And here's the shot from Paquette, no good. Moore on the rebound. Get it back out to Sipe. 
Sipe into West Reynolds. Reynolds rejected up front. Look at that. Fantastic work. And here comes a good layup by Lindgren. So Paquette trying to get something going here for the Clippers. They now trail by 14. Dick brings it back out. Sipe from the corner has to battle his way out. Here comes Paquette. And Sipe for three, splash down. Blodgett with the ball will give it off to Boykin. Boykin up to Davis, Davis back to Blodgett and up it goes and down it goes into the hand of Reynolds picking up the rebound. Moore with the ball. Paquette gives back off to Sipe. Sipe back to Moore. Shot clock at 10 seconds. Outside to Dick. Five seconds left on the clock. Contested three from Sipe is nowhere close. So an 11 point lead for Yakima as the ball comes back into play. Boykin taking his sweet time getting across the half court line. Lindgren with it, gives off to Davis. Davis tries to go inside to Britton. And here's a long three. Blodgett been on fire so far. And now Moore with the ball. Gives off to Sipe. Sipe outside to Dick. And Reynolds with the easy layup. Boykin directing traffic as he crosses the line. Shot clock at 20, give off to Britton, right back to Boykin, and Davis! No, they are not gonna give him the two-handed jam, a foul on Davis. That is the foul right there, and a timeout taken. So we step away again. But before we go, we'd like to remind you that today's game is brought to you by Everett CC. And it's Everett CC Trivia Time. Why do 19,000 students choose Everett Community College every year? Answer, we have fun with sports, by music, and more. You'll never want to leave. Register now for spring classes at everettcc.edu. The first day of school is kind of scary. You don't know your teachers yet or who your friends will be. But school is really important. It's how you learn things and grow. Okay, I'm ready. You're going to do great, Mommy. For you. For them. Clark College. Get started today at clark.edu. So about ready to get back and rolling. Seven minutes plus one second remaining in this first half as Paquette brings it in to Moore. Outside Paquette driving, gives off to Moore. Moore pushing up, slides back a bit, gives to Malloy. Malloy up and in for two of his own. So a 10 point lead. For the Yaks, they lead 25 to 15. Blodgett with the basketball, already has a couple of long threes to his credit. Rayner 
Right over to Boykin. Delp with the ball, blocked it for three. Not that time. They'll give off to Adrian Dick, who will give it right back to Moore. Malloy for three. And a spinner, but no good. But Reynolds with the offensive rebound for two. 25-17. Still a wide gap. But the Clippers are trying to close. They go to Blodgett. Delp. And that one is nearly intercepted. Boykin came away with it. Rainer for three. Splash down. Brings the lead back out to 11 for the Axe. Paquette to Moore. And Moore dumps it right back. Shot for three from Paquette is no good. Rebound is won by Adrian Dick. And now Paquetto able to use the screen of Reynolds, and here's three from Moore. Boykin dumps off to Blodgett, who will in turn give it right off to Rayner. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Boykin getting some instruction, finds Delp, Delp over to Rayner. Rainer over to Boykin, shot clock down to eight seconds. Blodgett, shot clock at five, trying to push up. And it's going to be Clippers basketball. No correction. We're gonna have a timeout, so we step away once again. Four, 27 left in half number one. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? Or am I cheating myself? What you say, Quaid? Whatever you're gonna do, claim it. Leave your mark on this world. So things about wrapping up with the timeout. 427 remaining in the first half. We'll take a look at our lead scorers right now. For the Yaks, that would be Quentin Rayner, who is tied with Blodgett who's also tied with Davis. So a three-way tie at six points. And Wes Reynolds currently leads the scoring for the Clippers with seven. So with one second, Delp the three, no good. So a timeout was called with one second left on the shot clock. Had to be a quick turnaround from the, when the ball was thrown in. Here comes Paquette. Paquette, the outside, finds more, more. Stole it away. Away goes Britton and a foul. And that foul is going to be on Paquette. That's his first personal, team's fourth. It is a 28 to 20 score as it stands right now. Two shots for Boykin. First shot is up and good, no problem. Boykin, a 76% shooter, nails them both in this attempt. And here's Paquette. Wasting no time, finds Reynolds. 
And Reynolds gives it right back. They give to Moore. Moore driving up will give out to Reynolds. And here's Malloy feigning three, spinning up, driving to the basket, no good. And Reynolds with the rebound. Shot clock at three, shot is off, and Bank is open. And now Boykin, off to Rainer for three, no good. 3.15 remaining. Outside shot for three is good from Malloy. The lead cut down to four. And here's Rayner trying to make his way around Paquette. Gives off to Delp. Delp over to Davis and Davis out to Boykin. Shot clock at six seconds. Boykin. Trying to push up and not happening. Not in my house, says Davis. And Malloy pushing up. And here's an opportunity, one on one and one and one. What a play by Boykin. My goodness, what a play. So one shot, a potential three-point play that foul on Paquette. That's his first personal. So Boykin sets up. He's done very well from the free throw line today. It's two for two, as a matter of fact, making it three for three. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Paquette with the ball, moves it across half court, doing battle with Boykin. They give off to Wes Reynolds. Reynolds up and good defense by Delp to keep Warren from coming in. Shot clock at 17 seconds and that one not able to stay in bounds. Seif tried his best. But the Yaks will have the ball from in front of their own bench. Delp will do the honors, bring the ball in. Boykin will be the first to touch it. Boykin surveying the situation, finds Delp. They go to Davis. Davis over to Britton. Britton up a hard contested layup for two. So ball now on the opposite side of the court. With it is Warren. Warren dumps off to Malloy. Malloy tries to get it to Reynolds and save Paquette for three. Splash down from downtown. And Britton puts it up, but no good. Warren comes away with the basketball. They go out to Malloy. Malloy to Reynolds. Reynolds is fouled hard. And that foul's going to be on Davis. That's his second personal. So Reynolds will go to the line. Reynolds' first free throws of the day. He'll miss the first one. The 64.9% free throw shooter during the regular season. Shot is up and good. Boykin. Near the middle of the court. Over to Delp. Delp outside to Rayner. Rainer back to Boykin as we're about to enter the final 60 seconds of the half. Defense! 
Boykin gives off to Britton. Shot clock at eight. Delp over the head, able to put it in. 37 to 30. And Warren, a contested three, splash down. Back to a four point difference between the Yaks and the Clippers. And now Boykin's gonna take a little extra time. About a 1.6 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So they'll give off to Rayner. And it looks like you're gonna be content to run the clock down. Delp with the ball, they give it off to Lindgren who's fouled. So six seconds remaining. And that foul's gonna be on Reynolds. That's his first personal foul, team sixth. No difference now between the shot clock and the game clock as that one's gonna go out of bounds off the foot of Rayner. So 5.4 seconds remaining. Charging is Paquette. Paquette nearly loses it. Long shot for three, no good. So an exciting end to the first half, a four point game, 37 to 33. The Yakima Valley Yaks looking for the upset of the Clippers. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Sweet 16 basketball. Training is definitely making myself better, but I know that it's gonna end up making my teammates better. You have to know your teammate and know what they need. The cohesion on the field and off the field is what makes everyone strong. Being on a team, you know it's not just you out there. I would do anything for the player next to me, behind me, in front of me. Practicing day in and day out, trying to be the best me so they can be the best them. It's like a sisterhood that you have with those girls. It's just really empowering. They're all doing crazy things. And you want to be like them, and you want to push yourself like them. Motivates me to work harder, to get faster, quicker. Pushing each other so hard, all for the same goal. And then when you accomplish it, that's the best feeling in the world. Once you tap into that, I think you're unstoppable. Soldiers in the Guard's intelligence field gather information on the enemy using a variety of tactics. Scanning foreign communications, conducting interrogations, and debriefing friendly contacts, all while delivering and coordinating data to help allies on the battlefield or stop civil emergencies. The enemy can't hide from guard intelligence. Time interviews. I'm here with a group of Roadrunners. So, you guys mind telling the folks back home who you are? Go ahead. Oh, uh, <laughs> wait, what did you say? Sorry. Tell the folks back home who you are. Oh, uh, we're the Lynn Benton Roadrunners out of uh, Albany, Oregon. Okay. And uh, names, positions? Oh, I'm Cooper Getzried, and uh, I, I play post. Okay. 14. I'm Taylor Jensen, I play wing post. And coach? I'm Everett Hartman, the head coach at Lynn Benton. All right, awesome. So, you guys have yourselves a uh, big uh, competitive game coming up as well. You're watching a potential upset down the court right now. So what do you guys have to say about your opponents coming in? Uh, Edmonds is a quality program. Uh, coming to the tournament here is a, about a yearly thing for them. They've been around a long time. They're a really, really good team, well coached. So we definitely have uh, a tough opponent. All right, awesome. So what are the big keys to uh, your guys' game coming in to face a very tough Tritons team? I think our uh, our defense needs to be picked up because the Tritons, they, they score a lot of points. and. Uh, our defense uh, really needs to pick it up today to get it a, to get a W. 
Yeah, we just got to follow our game plan, take out their best players, and I think we should be all right. All right, awesome. So, again, we've been uh, there's been a lot of difference in a lot of teams, the way they've used. Uh, a lot of running, playing hard in the paint, a lot of range. You haven't seen too much range so far. So what do you guys anticipate your big strength to be against that? I think our biggest strength is uh, our bench. We play 12, 13 guys. We try to get the ball up and down the floor. Uh, we share the sugar a lot. Uh, our leading scorer, uh, Bailey Evers, is 13.7, and we have another five or six guys between 13 and eight points a game. So uh, I think we're kind of hard to prepare for because there isn't one or two guys you got to shut down. Anybody is capable for being our leading scorer on a given night. All right, awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing that depth down there. I look forward to seeing you guys in action. So we'll be right back at Everett Community College right after this. Know you're more, more than a number, more than living paycheck to paycheck. You're a multitasking life engineer, full of experience. That's why you belong here, where you'll find more one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty, with programs that can lead to in-demand jobs, and the support you need to get where you want to go, all at an affordable price. Get started now. Edmonds Community College, edcc.edu. There is no obstacle an engineer can't tackle, build around, or blow up. Skilled and versatile, these soldiers pave the way, building fortifications, detecting and destroying mines, or restoring electricity after a natural disaster. Nothing stands in the way of a guard engineer. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. And be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the movement. movement. Red Lion Hotels Corporation is built to thrive. With innovative programming and in-the-know staff, our hotel brands offer guests great stays and a chance to immerse in local culture. Red Lion Hotels and Red Lion Inn & Suites are better than ever. For travelers who want to get lost and discover adventure, we open the door to the best local experiences. We have reinvented the loyalty program. Introducing Hello Rewards, the first recognition-based loyalty program it encourages members to go further, fly higher, travel better, with tailor-made rewards. And we're not stopping yet. Presenting Hotel RL, our newest hotel brand. Inspired by the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest, an uplifting, relaxed atmosphere, a staff that loves what they do. For adventurers at heart, Hotel RL will inspire an amazing journey. Our future has never been brighter. Three strong brands, an expanding portfolio, industry-leading innovation with turnkey solutions, simple fee structures, areas of protection, continued support from day one. We make partnerships easy. Reach a new breed of traveler with RLHC. Historic, unique, exciting. As challenges continue to test the mettle of Americans, your community has to depend on willing citizens just like you to answer the call and respond to local disasters and other times of crisis. You may be surprised to find out who we are and what we do. In fact, it could actually be your story too. The Air National Guard. From the arrival of the first colonies in the New World until today, communities across America have depended on their own local patriotic citizens to be available for extraordinary challenges as a part-time militia guard. For over 300 years, they have been in every war and rushed to the scene of every natural disaster. 
At the turn of the 20th century, when airplanes were used for various military needs, the state National Guard units flew for domestic use as well as preparing for wartime needs. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It soon became clear that the professional use of aircraft was very important to the United States. After World War II, Congress created the United States Air Force and transformed the aviation units at local guard units into the Air National Guard. Now, in more than 130 communities across the United States, the Air National Guard covers a wide variety of jobs, nearly 200 part-time and full-time career opportunities. Each location can host any number of unique missions, and each one of these missions includes many exciting jobs waiting for you to master. As our name suggests, air means you could be involved with aviation efforts, including space and cyberspace, volunteering for both state and federal needs. An excellent example is the Combat Air Patrol mission. The units assigned to this vital mission have fighters that are on alert, ready to scramble at a moment's notice, protecting local communities from aircraft entering unauthorized airspace. But not just pilots are involved. Munition specialists, aircraft mechanics, and airfield operations specialists are needed to keep these missions flying. Nowadays, everything is very high-quality electronics and very digitized. So what I do is I make... Fans, be sure to check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. Also, visit nwacsports.org for the most recent information on stores, schedules, stats, and more. So a riveting first half of men's basketball between the Yakima Valley Yaks and the South Puget Sound Clippers. And we get set for a, another riveting half here. Again, a 37-33 score. As the ball's in play, Boykin the first to touch it as Yakima with the first possession here. On the outside, Boykin to Delp and Rayner collects a three from the corner. And now Malloy will give it off to Paquette. Paquette on the outside gives to Moore. Moore over to Sipe. Sipe outside. Paquette from downtown. No good. Moore comes away with it and gets two off the rebound. So Boykin, moving the ball again, gives off to Rayner. Rayner over to Lindgren. Lindgren pushing up, finds Boykin, and here's Davis. Can't handle it. Reynolds on the rebound. And here comes Malloy. Malloy driving for two. So Boykin again directing traffic. Hands off to Lindgren. Lindgren moving up toward the near sideline. Gives off to Delp. Delp back to Rayner. Delp assessing the situation. Finds Boykin. Shot clock at 10. Boykin pushing up and no good for two. Just steal. Malloy wasting no time. Pushing up and gets two more of his own. And a timeout will be taken by the Axe as momentum has definitely shifted after the half. We step away, a one-point game in Everett. Keith Appleton, Education Outreach Officer at STCU. I have been labeled as frugal. I'm more motivated by saving money than I am about spending money. I essentially have had the same vehicle for nearly half of my life. It's absolutely practice what you preach. One of my passions is mountain biking, and one of the ways that I can afford to have a quality mountain bike is by cutting expenses in other areas of my life. STCU has given me an opportunity to share things that I've learned with the community. I'm Keith Appleton, and... Uh, As certified jumpers, divers, and survival experts, special forces are dropped behind enemy lines to train foreign fighters, carry out covert missions, or prevent future conflicts. These soldiers live for the challenge. Highly trained and highly intelligent. 
Special Forces soldiers are the best of the best. So a smart timeout taken by the Yaks as momentum has definitely shifted right out of the gates of halftime. It is a 40 to 39 game Yakima with a slim lead and now Boykin will move the ball for the Yaks. Boykin and Lindgren playing a little bit of catch as they cross half court. Shot clock at 17 seconds. And stolen away by Malloy. Malloy up the far sideline. Stepped out of bounds. No, a foul was called. That is the first personal foul on Lindgren. And it will be a Clippers throw in from just in front of the scorer's table. Ball in to Wes Reynolds. Reynolds pushing up. Goes outside, Sipe for three, no good. Rebound by Britton. Lindgren and two collected by Boykin. Teams trading points back and forth, a three point game, 42 to 39. Moore pushing, goes back. Malloy feigns three, pushes himself. Going in and not enough for two. Delp comes away with the rebound. Gives off to Boykin. Boykin a long toss to Rayner. Britt. And a foul. That foul on Wes Reynolds, his second personal. And it'll be a throw in. Go the short way to Britton, and they'll go back out to Boykin. Delp rushing toward the middle. They'll go back out to Gaynor. Shot clock at six seconds. Boykin contested three. No good. Rebound, sight. Pushing up, Malloy up and no good. Rebound by Delp. Well, we've seen both Reynolds and Delp get down and dirty for those rebounds, doing a fantastic job today. Part of why this game is still so close. Rainer to Delp, Delp the mid range two, no good. Malloy, the uncontested three, bank is open. We are tied at 42. Lindgren and Rainer for three, no good. Here comes Paquette, Paquette pushing up and collects two. Here comes Boykin. And that foul is going to be on Boykin. It's gonna be an offensive one. So Moore will check in, pardon, check out. And here comes Paquette. Paquette with the rock, trying to make his way around Boykin. Goes outside to Malloy. Malloy to Moore. Moore back to Paquette. Paquette pushing the paint. Malloy feigns three. And sight from the corner. No good. Moore, Malloy. No good. Reynolds on the rebound. And finally, a whistle as now Malloy is down holding his head. Helped up by his teammates though, he appears all right. May have just hit his head a little on the court and now he'll shoot two. 
And South Puget Sound leading for the first time since the first half and early in the first half, might I add. First free throw is no good. So Malloy will set up for his second attempt. Shot is up. And no good. The rebound by Britt. And that foul on sight, that's his first personal foul. Boykin moving the rock, gives off to Rayner. Rayner with the ball over to Delp, shot clock at 15. We have over to Boykin. Boykin. Draws the foul. That foul's going to be on Reynolds. That is the third personal foul on Reynolds. And a timeout will be taken, so we will step away, but don't you go anywhere. Close one, 44-42, Puget Sound with the lead. TCU member. The windstorm of 2015. Who doesn't remember that? It had no power for the heaters. The horse trough was a 600 pound block of ice. STCU stepped up. I went straight down. I got the loan I needed, but it hadn't been for STCU and the ability to. Today's game brought to you by Clark College. Clark College in Vancouver, Washington is enrolling for spring quarter. Whether you want to advance your career, complete your degree, or even earn your high school diploma, Clark College can help you reach your goals. Visit clark.edu to learn more. So as we welcome you back to Everett Community College, site of the 2018 NWAC Basketball Championships. It is a 44-42 game in which the Clippers are currently leading, but we can uh, rectify that now as two points have just been scored by the Yakima Valley Yaks. And here's a three-point opportunity for Delp. Again, Yakima led by as much as 14 points at one point. Are trying to complete the upset. Again, Yakima, the number four seed out of the East, playing the number one seed out of the West. That one nearly stolen away from Paquette by Boykin. And Paquette pushing up. Malloy ends up with it. Heavily contested. Three splashdown. <laughs> 47 to 45. Clippers have an advantage. And the winner of this game will play tomorrow against the Peninsula Community College Pirates who earlier today took down Clackamas. Again, all games that have been broadcast are available to re-watch or watch for the first time if you're just joining us on the NWAC YouTube channel or you can go to the STSPN website. As Delp on the outside dumps it off to Britton and Rayner, the last second on the shot clock and no. Good, rebound by Davis, and we're tied again. So Malloy on the outside, trying to make his way around Boykin. Screen set up by Sipe. They go to Moore. Moore rushing up, falls back. Malloy for three. 
No, and out of bounds, off the hand of Nolan Black. So it'll be Yakima basketball from their own baseline. 13-42 remaining in this contest. Again, stick around. Plenty more basketball coming your way as the Edmonds Tritons will take on the Lynn Benton Roadrunners. Approximately a half hour after the conclusion of this contest. Boykin goes backwards. Here's an opportunity for more. Up it goes. Easy layup for two. So the Clippers with a two-point lead, 49-47. Boykin close to the near sideline, getting some instructions from the bench. Hands off to Rayner. Rayner over to Delp. Delp pushing up and how about that? Fantastic work from Davis to put it in for two. Fantastic assist by Delp. Malloy pushing. And they're going to call foul. That foul on Britton. So Sipe will bring it in for the Clippers from the near sideline. Moore using the screen by Sipe going outside. Here comes Malloy outside. Sipe for three. And off the rim, no good. Fantastic rebound. However, from Reitman, and in it goes. 51-49 is our score. Rayner with the rock. They give to Delp. Delp is going to be fouled. And that foul's going to be on Sipe, and nobody on the Clippers bench can believe it. And for those at home wondering how many people attend these games at the tournament, there's 130 in attendance right now. Boykin, outside right hook, not happening. So it'll be a throw in. Boykin will do the honors from the baseline. 11-49 remaining in the second half. And how about more? Up he goes, and in it goes for two. And really upset Clippers crowd. We're still a little unsure what happened. Well, it looks like the foul on Nolan Black will send Davis to the line to shoot two. First one's in easy. And still a lot of chirping going on from the SPS crowd. Second shot is good as well. So clock ticks down to 11 and a half minutes. Malloy with the basketball. SPS leading 53-51, more outside, three, in and out, no good, Malloy on the rebound. Malloy up and in for two of his own. Now Boykin directing traffic. Lindgren hands off to Delp. Delp. And here we go now on the outside. 
That's Blodgett. Gives back to Delphin. Stolen away by Reitman. Up he goes for two and one. Ten fifty six remaining and a three point opportunity for the Clippers. Lines up his shot. And in it goes, so the three point play is complete. 58 to 51, Puget Sound taking a lead. Lindgren out to Boykin. Boykin pushing up and good for two. A five point lead for the Clippers. And Fane's three and wanting a travel call is everybody wearing the colors of the Yaks. And Sipes still unable to finish it. Trying to find an open man and instead goes to Boykin. Boykin up the near sideline. Pushing up himself and not able to finish it. There is a foul on the play, however. And that foul on Reitman, that's his second personal. So two for Boykin. Shot is good. A bucket here would make it a one possession game as we move into the final 10 minutes of this contest. Shot is up and good. And on the far sideline is Malloy. Malloy finds Black and Black able to finish it off. Moving with it now is Blodgett. Outside, mid-range two is good. Blodgett, the sharpshooter from the corner, able to put two more on the board. And a foul on Blodgett. So Malloy will throw in from the scores table sideline, but before that, we will step away. Timeout call, don't go anywhere. 9.32 remaining in a three point ball game. Three or more, more than a number, more than living paycheck to paycheck. You're a multitasking life engineer, full of experience. That's why you belong here, where you'll find more one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty with programs that can lead to in-demand jobs and the support you need to get where you want to go, all at an affordable price. Get started now. Edmonds Community College, edcc.edu. So the timeout just about wrapped up. It is a close game, a one possession game. 60 to 57 is our score at the moment with nine minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the second half. Wes Tucker here keeping you company. We'll be doing so until a little later this evening as Moore has control of the ball close to the far sideline. Reitman pushing up and not able to finish it off. And it ends up in the hands of Malloy. Malloy looking for an opportunity around Lindgren. And stolen away by Britton. 
Britton across half court, gives off to Boykin. Boykin over to Lindgren. Shot clock at 17 seconds. They go up to Britton and can't finish it off. That one's gonna go out of bounds off the hand of Sipe. So it'll be Yaks basketball from the Clippers baseline. Boykin to throw it in. Finds Britton, Britton right-handed, hook no good, and ends up in the hands of Nolan Black. Black immediately gives off to Malloy who will move it back in to Yaks territory. Fane's three, now here's a jumper with a hand in his face. A good rebound by Sipe. Ball still not finished, it ends up in the hands of Britt. And here we go, outside Lindgren. They go to Britt. And a quick jumper for two, no good. Rebound got by Sipe. As we enter the final eight minutes. And that one off the hand of Britt. It's going to be Clippers basketball. Intended target for that was Moore. Right by the NWAC logo near the corner of the Clippers bench. Moore to throw in. Sipe. We'll go outside to Malloy. Malloy goes back over to Reitman for three. Bank is open. So a two possession game now after the three point bucket. Blodgett with the ball, gives off to Boykin. Boykin over to Lindgren, shot clock at 15. Go to Boykin again, pushing up and good for two. And off goes Moore. As he crosses half court, doing battle. Passes it across and right back, Malloy. Outside, long three from Black, air ball. Blodgett doing battle with Moore. Nearly stolen away by Britt. Malloy trying to push. They go to Moore on the outside. Moore pushing the paint. Backs a step up. Goes to Sight for three. Off the rim, no good. Saved by Black. And intercepted by Boykin. Boykin moving up and draws the foul. He had Blodgett wide open if he desired to take a step back. Had Blodgett shoot three. He's been hot from that corner all game. So Boykin will go to the line and shoot two. And a four-point lead for the Clippers. And Brick's the first one. Couple of subs coming in. Rayner and Delp check back in for the Yaks. And Reynolds and Paquette check back in for the Clippers. Second is made, so it's a three-point lead, 63-60, to 60, still in favor of the Clippers. And speaking of Paquette, here he comes outside, sets up a three, no good, rebound taken by Boykin. And that one's off the foot of Paquette. And a foul. They're going to call it on Britt. So Britt picks up his fourth personal foul. So Britt in some trouble. And Davis is going to come in to replace him. Going to the line to shoot is going to be Max Reitman. 
6.15 remaining in this contest as the shot is up and good. Shot two, good as well. So back to a two possession lead for the Clippers. They give it to Rayner, Rayner hands off to Blodgett, Blodgett moving up the far side. And here comes Boykin, Boykin into Rayner once more and they overthrow Boykin. So a turnover. It'll be Clippers basketball from the Yaks baseline. And here is the Clippers opportunity to break away. Both teams been very scrappy up to this point and Moore completes it for two. So here goes Boykin, Boykin finds Rayner, Rayner Gives off to Blodgett, and there's a foul. So Blodgett will go the line and shoot. Blodgett set up his first time at the free throw line today is good on the first. Two possession game. Second shot is good as well. Malloy with the ball, moves past Delp, being double teamed now by Delp and Rayner. Falls on the ball, stolen away by Rayner. They go outside, Blodgett, the three, in and out. So close, they get back though. Boykin finds Davis, Davis to Delp, nearly following the ball out of bounds. That one off the foot of Boykin, able to recover. 10 seconds on the shot clock, long three from Rayner. Splash down from downtown. 67 to 65. And nearly stolen away and ends up in the hands of Malloy. All right, and a timeout will be taken. So away we step. Things heating up in Everett. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? Or am I cheating myself? Say what you say, Quaid? Whatever you're gonna do, claim it. Leave your mark on this world. And it's EVCC trivia time. Where can you live? Just steps from Everett Community College classes and have one payment for rent, utilities, and furniture? The answer, EVCC student housing. Check out our student apartments at evcc.edu slash housing. So within five minutes, a one possession game. The Clippers lead 67-65. The Yaks trying to pull off an upset. The East number four seed against the West number one as Reynolds with the ball first. Outside it's Paquette backtracking a bit. Sipe making his way to the basket. Reynolds looking for him. 
Instead finds Paquette, the contested three is no good off the rim. Reynolds on the rebound, and he gets his own rebound again. This time he finishes it off. Delp with the ball. They go to Blodgett. Blodgett for two, look at that. Beautiful skill underneath the net. He's been getting it done all morning. They go to Paquette. Paquette back to Malloy. Malloy pushing up and swatted by Delp. However, a foul will be collected. That's the third personal on Delp. So two for Malloy. Malloy set up, shot one on the way and no good. Again, truly a treat of a game to watch. Winner of this game is going to play Peninsula tomorrow in the Elite Eight. Malloy set for shot two on the way. No good. Rebound Delp. Talk about a huge momentum play right there. Delp pushes up. Blodgett almost able to tie the game. Long three, no, yes! How about that? It's the right spin off of the rim. Boykin, Blodgett, to Rayner. Blodgett feigns three, pushes up, and is fouled. So here comes Blodgett to the line. He'll shoot after being fouled. Shot is up and good on number one. Blodgett setting up for shot two. And that's good as well. Seventy-two to sixty-nine. Still a one-possession ball game. Reynolds gives off to Malloy. Malloy up the far side toward the corner, pushing in one-on-one -on -one with Davis, and not able to save it from going out of bounds is Paquette. So the Yakima ball from the near sideline, just to the right of the media table. And Boykin saunters across half court. Boykin from someone open finds Blodgett, Blodgett. And Rainer for three, no. And a rebound by Paquette. Paquette doing battle with Boykin. Paquette trying to find an open man, finds one, up goes. Reitman and no, not able to finish it. Davis comes away with it. They give up to Rayner. Rayner over to Boykin. Boykin pushing, goes back to Blodgett. Blodgett to Rayner. Rayner on the outside, Delp for three. We are tied. Brand new ball game. So Malloy making his way across half court, one-on-one -on -one with Delp. Finds a way through, Davis comes away with the steal. And stolen away again by Reynolds, and Reynolds takes a hand to the face. And that foul he is going to be on Boykin. 
So tied at 72, Wes Reynolds will go the line to shoot for the Clippers. Two minutes remaining in this Sweet 16 matchup. Shot is up and the one and one isn't gonna work out. Outside they go Boykin, Boykin, here goes Blodgett for three, no. They go back to Paquette. Paquette staring down with Delp. Paquette pushing up. They go outside. Reitman for three. Off the rim, no good. Taken in by Malloy. And a foul. So Malloy will go to the line. 32 seconds have ticked off while we've been tied. A minute 28 remaining. Malloy to the line. He's 0 for 2 on free throws today. Here goes the shot, and good on the first. Malloy set once more. 73-72, the score as it stands at the moment. And they get 74-72. A minute and 24 seconds remaining in the contest. Blodgett directing traffic. Pushing up outside, Rayner to Delp. Outside, Boykin for three. And the lead goes back to the X. 75, 74, 60 seconds remaining. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Malloy pushing up. Not able to finish it off. Ends up in the hands of Boykin. So Boykin taking his time. Moves across half court with a second to spare and a timeout taken by the Axe. 40 seconds left, one point lead. This is NOAC Basketball on STSPN. seconds remaining in this contest a one-point lead for the Yaks and they have possession coming out of this timeout it's been a long hard-fought game up to this point can the Yaks pull off the upset in the Sweet 16 we'll find out in a few short minutes they go to Blodgett on the outside playing a little bit of keep away to begin shot clock at 17 Boykin with the rock Boykin looking for an open man. Got Blodgett on the far right, and that's where they go. Shot clock at five. Blodgett pushing up outside. Rainer for three. No, off the rim. Held on to. 17 seconds. We'll see how they decide to play it. Malloy staring down Delp. Pushing up and trying to get the charging. Foul is... Delp and now time is called 
with six seconds remaining. It's a one point game, don't go anywhere. There is no obstacle an engineer can't tackle, build around, or blow up. Skilled and versatile, these soldiers pave the way, building fortifications, detecting and destroying mines, or restoring electricity after a natural disaster. Nothing stands in the way of a guard engineer. Six seconds remaining in this stellar contest. 6.7 if you're keeping direct track at home. 76 to 75, the Yakima Yaks will have the final possession here. An opportunity to pull off an upset against the South Puget Sound Clippers. Huddles are breaking on the sideline, so here we go. They'll have to be relatively quick. Will be from the Yakima baseline. They go Boykin. Boykin has to waste no time. They're at three, two, one. The shot is no good. Davis nearly had it, but the win is secured by the Clippers. What a game in the Sweet 16. The final score, the South Puget Sound Clippers, 76, and the Yakima Valley Yaks, 75. Still, what a game. We'll see the Clippers play the Pirates tomorrow in the Elite Eight. But we have more NWAC basketball coming your way. Stick around as Edmonds Community College will do battle with Lynn Benton Community College. From everybody here at the Northwestern Athletic Conference, STSPN, our entire crew in the truck always do a fantastic job. I'm Wes Tucker, and we'll see you in about a half hour.